Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and do another chi-squared goodness of fit. So I've got this data uh, from this hair and this eye color and gender as well. I want to just go ahead and copy this data in and include it into my data. So this is included in the extra class material if you're wanting to follow along. Then go ahead and click OK, upload this in. Okay, so here's my question. I said, does eye color follow the assumed distribution? So I've got that 35% are going to be blue, 45% blue, are going to be brown, 15% are hazel, and 5% are green. <clears throat> okay, so I want to see if it's going to follow this distribution. The first thing that I need to see is, like, do I have enough data to actually uh, perform this? So because I need each of my expected values to be at least five. I only really need to check one. I just need to check, is this green one going to be big enough? So I can take this 5% and multiply it by my sample size. So I can do 0 0.05 multiplied by 592. Says my smallest one is going to be, I expect it to be roughly 30. So expected values. All over, uh, we'll say 5 or over. So we're good to go. So let's go ahead and run this analysis then. So here we're just going to go to our statistics our summaries, and we're going to do a frequency distribution. We're going to choose the eye color here, and we're going to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. And I'm going to click OK. And here, look, I can go in and actually choose uh, the probabilities that I want to use. So instead of blue for like 25%, I want to say I think that that is 35%. Brown, I think, is 45%. Green, I've got at 15%, and hazel, I've got at 5%. So the one thing that you want to make sure is that these, in fact, do add up to 1. So we've got 0.35 plus 0.45, so that's going to get us to 0 0.8. And then we've got plus 0.15 that gets us to 0 0.95, 0 0.05 gets us to 1, so we're good. We've covered all possible outcomes here. Okay, then we can just click OK. And we come down here and look, and we see that from what we actually saw, we saw 36% blue, we saw 37% brown, we saw 10% green, and we saw 15% hazel. And we're wondering, like, is this enough to show that there is a difference between these two? And, well, I guess, first of all, I forgot to actually put down my null hypothesis. So null hypothesis is that uh, eye color or is like true dis we'll do like true distribution of eye color follows assumed distribution the alternative is that true distribution of eye color is different we'll set that alpha level alpha level equals 0 0.05 and we did our checks we should have written out our hypotheses first slip up on my part uh, but now we can look at our chi squared and I'm just going to go ahead and copy this so that I don't have to write it all out again so there's our chi squared our degrees of freedom our p-value and then we can say that we collected sufficient evidence and I could say that alpha equals 0 0.05 p-value yeah that's fine p-value is less than 0 0.0000 to reject the claim I reject the claim that the eye color follows the, uh, well, let's, we'll say that the true distribution of eye color follows the distribution, distribution of, we'll say, P, and then we'll go for blue, equals 0 0.35. P brown equals 0 0.45, P 
P. Hazel equals 0 0.15 and then P. Green equals uh, 0 0.05 and conclude that the true distribution true distribution of eye color follows some oops follows some other distribution okay so we've got this and then the last thing that we want to do is add in a bar graph so let's go to our graphs we can go to our bar graph and we want the I and in the options instead of doing frequencies we could do frequencies but percentages is going to be a little bit easier to help us kind of compare to what the um, what the hypothesized probabilities were and so we can then go ahead and click OK and we can see that we've got blue was up at like 37 so kind of close but brown was n not at 45 it was quite a bit lower green looks like it was bigger at 10 and hazel looks like it was pretty close uh, and we can actually see these over here but because of how much data we had even though that they are close ish that we were able to find significant differences and suggest that in fact it was different than the hypothesized proportions uh, or the hypothesized uh, distributions and that's about it so good luck and this is uh, how we do our chi-squared goodness of fit uh, when we just have a general distribution that we're worried about